Oh man, you stepped into the wonderful world of filters. We are so pumped about this, and I think there is so much functionality that you can have in filters to help you um, better organize and collect your data in a way that not only will help with reporting, but then uh, assigning to the correct team member to answer it. So let me hop over. Here's the filtering area, and I've gotten to this uh, by just simply going to the setting, settings underneath uh, Echo and then choosing filters at the top. Now, the first thing you have to do is actually create a filter collection and because uh, these will all be blank for you when you're first starting. And so when you create that collection, it's uh, pretty straightforward. The first thing you're going to do is, well, first it'll help if I, my fingers are in there. Oh, my goodness. What did I just do? The first thing you're going to do is uh, demo collection. We'll just add that in. Uh, is give it a name. That's pretty straightforward and, and fairly simple to do. Uh, and then after you've done that, then the next thing you want to do is edit this name. And this is where really all the work is going to happen. And the, and the next thing you want to do is say, what sources do I want to filter off of? And so this is a chance for you to go in and choose the different sources that you want uh, for this filter to apply to. And this is all going to be based on whatever whatever content uh, you have. So if you've got a, a Facebook page or a chat or email or whatever you've configured, that's what the options are. Uh, our little joke place that we test things on is called Radiohead Support Group. It's a th thriving Facebook page uh, that we use. Okay, so you'll choose whatever yours are. There's mine at the top there. And then the next thing we get to do is uh, we have the ability to filter by a language. So for instance, I can come in here, choose English as an example, and add that language in. So what Echo is going to do is it's going to read that first message and determine what language is this in. So as an example, if we choose, um, let's do English, and let me see if I can type in. Okay, it's just let me type first letters there. So uh, S for Spanish there. So I'll add English and Spanish as an example. Then I can come up here and test this filter and say, como estas, especially if I could spell it right, uh, and test that. And you can see here uh, this test result of, oh, okay, it detected that that language was Spanish. And uh, after that, there was no other filtering option, so it didn't do anything else on this. So likewise, if we use this, uh, since I've already typed this, I'll just copy it in. If I click into Spanish, I can add a filter. And I can give this filter a name. This is a friendly name for me as an admin uh, and reporting wise uh, to be able to put into this. So I can just say, um, uh, how are you? Um, we'll, we'll teach a little Spanish while we're at this here. And so here I can just go in and say, hey, if it contains como estas, that's, that's fantastic. That's what I want it to do. Or um, you know, some other phrase, I could add that here. Maybe I don't need the question mark, I'll just have it like that. And then I could just put a comma and then type in other uh, words or phrases there. I'll just leave this first one there. And I can say, hey, when it does that, uh, just assign it to um, um, whatever, whatever Daniel's best permission set here. We'll just assign it to that one. And then I can just create that. And so now if we test this filter and we come in here and uh, do uh, como estas again, then you'll see that now that's going to go into the filter, how are you? And it's going to assign it to this permission set that you see listed here. Isn't this cool? So, so the way this ends up working is you can go in and create these multiple um, filters and, and put in different information. So like maybe we have one called urgent. <laughs> Uh, or Andre's typing lessons. And this is if someone says uh, suicide or uh, kill myself. Um, 
you know, or something else, right? And so um, one of the things we can do with this is we can change this to like, hey, this is this is an emergency. Like you got to really pay attention to this if if a message comes in and says that. We'll go ahead and assign it to the Daniel's permission set as an example. Uh, oh. Yep, and apparently spelling is not my friend uh, on, on all of these things, my goodness. Um, and so, uh, all right, so, um, great, am I, am I spelling that right? Fantastic, okay. So once I have that saved uh, inside here, I can update that. Then I can go in and test these filters and uh, you can see if I had something like uh, the word suicide, oh, that's English and it's urgent. It's the urgent filter that I called it urgent. Now, the way this plays itself out, you'll notice this has a color next to it. And so um, it's going to highlight itself in the uh, inbox, in the queue area. It's going to highlight itself in that color. So you can go in and create a set of filters. Um, this is the next filter and uh, maybe this one is just urgent and um, some other keyword I'll just write uh, urgent word <laughs> uh, and again a destination permission set and maybe this goes to a different group of people um, if this has it or maybe this goes to both that different group and the permission set you can add multiples here and so now we have this urgent uh, one and I'm just going to change this name to emergency just to make that make a little more sense for this demonstration we have this uh, next one that's urgent you can see I can add a third one in that's important and um, again these are you know just words that we're using to help you kind of give some priority um, to these and I'll just put that as a keyword. Of course, you would put more meaningful keywords. Again, assign it to some kind of permission set. And so, and then we have maybe just um, one that doesn't need a color coding of some kind, but uh, maybe it's about, um, you know, different religions. Uh, you know what? Spelling apparently is not my friend when I'm doing these live demos uh, and so you could have different keywords like uh, different religions here uh, as an example and so now we could go in put these different things in once we're done with this here's the deal what will happen is the conversation comes into echo echo reads it and decides what language is this is this spanish or is it english and uh, in, the, in these two cases, these are the two that it's determining here. If it's English, then it's going to kind of like imagine a marble or a, a funnel. It'll go down to this next level. Does it contain any of these words? So does it contain suicide or kill myself? If the answer is yes, it, it labels it as that and it's done. It, it moves on. If it's not one of these words, it goes to the next filter and it looks to see are any of these words inside here. Again, if the answer is yes, it stops. If the answer is no, it goes down. Does it have any of these words? Yes, stop, no, go down. Does it have any of these words? Yes, no, stop, go down. So, it, okay, catch all. Well, all we know is it's English <laughs> uh, and that's everything we've got on it. Well, that works too. And then it's like, okay, it's English. It didn't meet any of these criteria. So we don't even have to put keywords here. It's a catch all. And so we would just go in and say, hey, if it's a, if it's a catch all, uh, assign it uh, to this particular permission set. So then we could test that. So um, this is a sentence in English. So you know we could type something in like this, and that's going to be a catch-all, right? Because none of those others had that phrase in it. But if I said uh, this is a sentence in English about uh, suicide, um, as an example, then now we can see this is a filter of emergency and it's going to go to Daniel's best permission set. So it's going to be labeled red and then go to that permission set. Um, if it said, um, as an example, urgent word and important. So if I said about urgent and important things, 
What's going to happen here? Well, it's going to go down. Let's find out. Let's click test. And it's going to say it's in the important area, even though, did I misspell urgent? Oh, because it's not urgent word, because I made that one, one thing there. So let's change that just to make sure I'm teaching you the right information. Uh, great. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Um, so I, because I wrote urgent word without a comma, uh, it's looking for that whole thing to be present before. Uh, so that's the other thing. Maybe you sometimes don't have to write out every part of the word. If the word could end in ing, ed, you know, then maybe you just put it before that and put a comma and it'll look for that string of letters together and then go on and do that. But because I had urgent word, right, it picked this one. Um, if I just had the word urgent in it, uh, yep, and uh, if I tested that, then we'll see it goes down to important because it doesn't contain urgent word, it just contains urgent. So the first thing it can find is uh, important. Now, you notice it finds important. So now, if I write the word about Islam uh, as an example, right? So now I've added these words and phrases uh, that we see below here, uh, let me find my mouse, and I test that, then you'll see it's still doing the important. And the reason it's doing important is important is above the religion Islam there. So if I take this, I can always rearrange these. So you can drag these in a different order. So if I use that same sentence now and test it here, we'll see now it went to religion because that was on top of where it says important. So these, this ordering of this is very important as you go through and do this. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's, that's filters. You'll see that this test filter is really going to help you make sure you've built things out right. Uh, when you've done this and really kind of push this through, this may have a lot of words in here that kind of connect to these different things. This will help you in reporting, and this will also help ensure that you're routing the particular conversation to where it needs to go. So you know, if you have a particular source and you mostly have English speakers as an example, but sometimes people in Spanish also email into that as an example, then you could set it up to detect just the language Spanish and then route it to your Spanish team if that happens. Or um, you could also go in and set this up to, to um, you know, depending on those different words or phrases, it could go in and bring it over to just a particular group of people uh, to that are best suited to handle that sort of more sensitive uh, conversation type than the others. Or maybe you still want it to just go to your, your whole team, but you'd like to color code it or later run some reporting to say, well, how many people are contacting us with things like, suicide or depression or some of these other words and phrases and, and you can grow this and continue to kind of tweak this as you go right because as you do it and as you see them coming in the queue you may see other words or phrases that help you better uh, refine this to give you the results you want filters are super powerful so definitely check them out uh, this is something that can really help you as you begin to scale and grow uh, your online ministry. Thanks for watching this. Ask us questions if there's anything else we can help you with.